This is Bob Capetta, professor of mathematics at College of DuPage. This lesson is from Math for Health Sciences, and today we're going to look at data analysis and percentile. Percentile is one of the more important concepts that we get when we're looking at a large set of data to help us understand how it behaves. Now, the definition of a percentile sort of depends on which textbook you look at. I am going to say that the 70th percentile is a number, is a data point, that is higher than 70% of the data. You did better than 70% of the other people in the data set. The score is more than 70% of the data set. That's the way I like to think about this. Some authors say at least as high as. So whether you're higher than or at least as high as, the difference is negligible, so we're not going to worry about it too much. But here, let me go ahead and uh, give you an example. So we're looking at a data set that has 273 elements. If we're going to talk about percentiles, typically we want to work with a data set that has many, many elements. Our goal is to find the 40th percentile. So to do that, we've got to put the data set in order from lowest to highest. And that's a bit of a challenge, but I'll show you how to do that on Excel. Next, we want to identify the relevant location in the list. Now, we have to be 40% of the data and the data set has 273 elements. So 40% of 273 is 109.2. So I need to be better than 109.2 people. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If I am at the 110th, i.e. round up, I'm certainly better than 109, hence 109.2. If the number has a decimal, like this does, 0.2, you just round up, and that's relatively easy for us to find. So we go through the list, find the 110th element, that would give us the 40th percentile. Now for the next example, we're going to look at a data set with 600 elements, and our goal is to find the 80th percentile. So we're going to arrange the data in order from lowest to highest again, and we need to be better than 80% of the numbers in that list. So that's 80% of 600, 0.80 times 600 gives us 480. This is different. This is a whole number, no decimal part. If we get a whole number, an integer, we've got to take the average of that location and the next location. So rather than just looking at the 480th, we take the average of the 480th and 481st. So in the event, we multiply the percentile by the number and we get a whole number. We take the average of that location and the next one. So let's look at a couple examples here. I'm going to grab data from the following location. Vanderbilt University has quite a bit of data available at this location. biostat.mc.vanderbilt.edu slash wiki slash main slash data sets. So I will encourage you to visit that site. I will show you what I see when I visit that site. So the data sets are available here and they are in many formats. The easiest one for us to use, I think, will be the Excel format. So I'm going to choose one of the data sets in the Excel format for us to look at. So I think I will try the diabetes data. So if you would, please download diabetes.xls, and we'll do some analysis on that data set. So I've pulled up this data set. I hope it looks similar on your computer. And my goal is to examine the weight column column K, and I want to do something with the percentiles there. So before I do that, I want to go ahead and put those in order from lowest to highest. So I'm going to click on K, and then I'm going to sort the data. So column K is what I'm interested in. So bring your cursor up to K, click on it, and make sure the entire column is clicked, which is what we have here. And then we're going to sort the data. So we're going to click on the data button up top. We're going to go to sort. We want to sort it ascending. And it's going to give us a choice, either to continue with the current selection or expand the selection. I'm going to expand the selection. It'll move all of the numbers so that we maintain the integrity of the data set. We're just switching the order with which it's presented. Um, and that's what we get. So I have successfully um, 
selected all of the elements in that column and organized them from lowest to highest. So you'll notice the person with the lowest weight is 99 pounds. If I click on that and copy it, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to move it in another cell. I'm going to move it off to the side here so I can see it. I'll put it here. And uh, those are all the numbers that we have in order from lowest to highest. And I would like to go ahead and put numbers to the left so I know how, how far down the list I am. One, two, three. And let's see if that will fill it in all the way down. So I hope that's done that. So now I have a list of numbers. So these are locations. So the first location, second location, third location, and then uh, from lowest weight to highest weight. And I'll go ahead and do some analysis of that. So the question says, what is the 25th percentile of the weights of the people included in the diabetes study? Well, I need to see how many people are on the list. And according to my page here, it says 402 people are on the list. Well, let's go back and check the Excel sheet and see if that is indeed the case. So as I scroll this down, how far does it take me? And indeed, you will see that the last number in the list is number 402. So there are indeed 402 elements on that list. I want the 25th percentile. So to do that, I multiply 0 0.25 times 402. 402 elements on the list. 0.25 times 402 is 100.5. And typically we're pretty happy that it has a decimal because then all I have to do is round up. So I'm going to round up from 100.5 to 101. So if I go to the 101st element, it has bested 25% of the data. So the 101st element will correspond to the 25th percentile. So as I go back there, let's see what the 101st element is. One hundred first element is 151, so let's go back and fix that on the slide. So the 100 first element is 151 pounds, not 101 pounds. Let's go ahead and make that change. So when we got to the 100 first element, we saw that it was 151 pounds, and that will correspond to the 25th percentile. Let's take a look at one more example. So this time I'm going to ask, what is the 50th percentile? Now, there are still 402 people in the list. To find the 50th percentile, I'm going to multiply 0 0.50 by 402. And half of 402 is 201, and you will notice that this is different. 201 is a whole number. It is an integer. It does not have a decimal part. If you get a situation like that, you have to take the average of the 201st and 202nd elements in the list. So we want to find that average, and we'll see how that behaves. So again, we're going to look for 201 and 202. So coming down the list, where do I see 201 and 202? 201 and 202 are here. The 201st number was 172. The 202nd number was 173. If I'm going to average those together, 172 plus 173 divided by 2 will give me 100. 72 and a half. And we can see that there. So this time we'll ask ourselves, what is the 75th percentile of the weights of the people included in the diabetes study? Still 402 people on the list. To find the 75th percentile, we multiply 0 0.75 by 402. 0.75 times 402 is 301.5. That does not represent a whole number. It has a decimal, so I round that up to 302. If that's the case, the 75th percentile corresponds to the 302nd number in the ordered list. So how do we find that? We go back to Excel and look for number 302. And what do we have here? For the 302nd number in the list, it appears to be 200. So if that is the case, we could argue that 200 pounds represents the 75th percentile. So that means that 75% of the people are 200 pounds or less. 
recognize these are probably self-reported numbers, so you've always got to be a little concerned about making generalizations based on those. And that will complete this lesson.